ShireSociety.com. During World War I, Winston Churchill made two observations that speak to today's crippled, broken technology. The, the technology that is way behind where it should be. So it was in World War I. Then, as now, people could not comprehend. Uh, they stared with vacant eyes at what was missing. Actually, <laughs> I've, I've practically already quoted him. He used the term crippled, broken world to, to define the world that, that came into existence in, you know, in 19, you know, during World War I. And he also used the term vacant eyes to describe the way that generals and politicians looked at their military options back in those days. So there was a simple, well, not simple necessarily, but a technological solution to the problem of World War I. Churchill used to say it it was so simple, it was just a, a matter of placing a thin plate of steel between the enemy machine gun and the friendly soldier or between the enemy torpedo slash fluvial mine and the friendly ship. So mines and machine guns essentially were the thing that was stopping a, a war of movement from happening in World War I. It was creating the carnage and siege warfare of the trenches. These were technical developments and they had a technical countermeasure. Uh, But no one could seem to grasp the simplicity of this. They couldn't grasp the fact that all they needed to do was develop a new technology. Uh, Ultimately, they settled on the tank and the blistered ship. So uh, ships that, you know, first starting with tanks, they were able to, of course, defeat machine guns by moving forward without being destroyable by machine guns. And blistered ships were basically ships that had two hulls. So you had one hull that would be hit by the enemy mine and it would preserve the real hull and the ship. Anyway, so those two solutions took forever for them to, to you know implement and meanwhile they just sent guys to their death for no particular reason over the top of the trenches. Well, in the same way modern day people are not able to comprehend all the technologies that we should have and should be using, but we don't have. And meanwhile, they just carry on uh, sending their lives over the top, as it were, using these outdated technologies. Not even able to put their minds around what could be out there if it weren't for all this government intervention. So, for instance, here are some technological ideas that would be really easy to implement, but they're banned or they're restricted, so they don't come about. The first of these, speaking of blistered ships, is what I call blistered cars. Every time you get in your car and drive, you are forced to submit yourself to the sunlight that's coming in, whether you want it or not, just so that cops can also look into your vehicles. Everything has to revolve around cops. You're not allowed to tint your windows, and no one has ever developed a vehicle or a device for a vehicle that helps you combat sun that's coming in from the wrong direction. I mean, other than those little visors that don't work. So what should exist is the ability to buy a car that has heavy tinting, especially on the sides, you know, in front, And you should be able to adjust the tint all the way from 100% to 0% if you want. But this kind of thing is illegal in most states. In fact, I was at the hearing in New Hampshire where a guy who, you know, he was photosensitive and he wanted to, you know, get rid of the law that was forcing everyone to, to limit their window tinting. Oh, you should have heard the FUD from the government goons who showed up to fight this individual citizen. Oh, we can't do that. People might shoot cops from inside their cars. God forbid, that might make cops have to be more cautious and nice to the people. But you know, if people could tint their windows all the way, that would solve so many problems. First of all, it would reduce the need for using the air conditioner. It would 
uh, it would make it so that people were safer inside their cars, particularly when they're stopped. When you're stopped in your car in a parking lot or something like that, you are at risk because every burglar in the area or robber or jacker can see right in there. This is all to help the cops at your expense. Now, I'm not sure how much cops are at fault for the lack of the other option you could have on vehicles. It would be nice if vehicles, again, had a more of a blistered approach where you could, if you chose, you have two different windows that roll up. So you have one window that's just glass, it rolls up and down, you, but you could have another window on the outside of that, which rolls up and down, and you it's like completely opaque. So, kind of like a blast shield almost. And I guess it could serve as a sort of blast shield if you wanted it to. But the main purpose would just be to block out sunlight and make it so that whenever you come back to to your car after going into the grocery store on a hot day, well, the car has not got the greenhouse effect. Oh my gosh, it's, you know, all day you hear government, pro government people whining about greenhouse effect and how it's so important to battle greenhouse effect by imposing a bunch of new laws, well, actually, it would be nice to be able to impose the greenhouse effect that we all suffer from every summer inside our own vehicles. So I'm not sure if this is a government problem. Maybe it's just the fact that automotives, you know, automo- automotive companies are not innovative enough and they don't offer this with their vehicles when they really should. Who needs a sunroof? This kind of thing would be much more useful. I suspect there is uh, some government culpability here indirectly in the sense that governments, you know, force so many auto, you know, aspiring auto dealers out of business with their heavy taxation and regulation. The latter two favor established automotive companies. Anyway, that's just one invention that could be, in, you know, available to us. There's nothing wildly technological about it. It could be done with 1960s technology, probably. But if you wanted to make a company that did this, again, you couldn't just do that. You'd have to go through a bunch of regulation first to start your company. You'd have to apply, comply with all these different rules and uh, human resources restrictions and Americans with Disabilities Act and Affirmative Action this and OSHA that, I bet you don't want to start a business that does that. Imagine how many businesses have been just stopped from ever coming into existence. Because no one wants to have to go through the paperwork and the hassle and the hiring of following all these different regulations. Feel good, look good on paper regulations. Anyway, more more technological ideas to follow. More that have been denied you. Really out.